It's time for the Ravagers to rise once again to glory. You are listening to The Ravager Report, a Fox Next Marvel Strike Force podcast dedicated to bringing you the latest news, information, and updates with your hosts, Dorian. It is a name what strikes fear into the hearts of anyone what hears it. And Hebrew Hammer. I'm very popular, y'all. Hello and welcome to episode 43 of the Ravager Report. I am, as always, your host, Dorian, and with me is the extremely high Hebrew Hammer. Hebrew, <laughs> how you doing tonight, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing pretty good. I'm not, I'm not crazy high. And it's on painkillers, by the way. <laughs> so I take so, it... I take it you're so, still dealing with your wisdom teeth. Yeah, yeah. Oh it's man, bad. <laughs> I am so, I am so, so, so sorry to hear that. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it's cool. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm yeah, chilling. I, I bet you are. Yeah, got some sparkling water with me. Oh, got to have the old life's, Pellegrino. Exactly. Life's life's good right now. Life's good. Oh man. Oh, all right. <laughs> I am so sorry, man. I really am. So we are recording live. Uh, It is Friday, August 2nd. And uh, just so you know, if you want to listen live, you can do so by coming to our uh, Discord server at at discord.me forward slash Ravager Report. Uh, We usually start between 10 and 10.30 p.m. And we do a pre-show for our patrons, which you can join if you go to patreon.com forward slash Ravager Report where we have subscriptions starting at $2 going all the way to 20 So Hebrew, with the uh, necessary plugs out of the way, why don't you mm. let everybody know what you do this past week? Uh, so this week I've um, been dealing with my Wisdom 2, so that's been interesting. Uh, it's it's The infection, for the most part, is gone, but it's still like, you know, it's still like emerging, and it's it's coming in the wrong way. So it just is really painful, but I can't get the surgery done until I get back from my vacation. So, oh yeah, um, so yeah, painkiller time. Uh, and not so much I'm not used to painkillers at all, so it's like really having an effect on me. So it's it's been an interesting past couple of days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, other than that, though, um, everything's been doing pretty good. School's getting close to starting back up, so that'll be interesting, especially. With all of the the podcasts I have going, which I just launched a new one today, by the way. If anyone here uh, still plays AFK Arena or or likes to play AFK Arena or wants to try it, um, Chewburger, myself, and Spider Guy Twenty Two, we made a podcast called AFK Anonymous, and it's um, it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Yeah, the game and, was a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, like the the biggest thing for me is just I don't want to get too much into it, but the biggest thing for me is like, and I think we all agree on it. Um, we mentioned it a couple times in the show. It's just the generosity of the devs and how much they they care and pay attention to the things that we say is it's unmatched in any game that I've played, like not even close. And it really highlights the differences between the management of Fox Next and um, other games. I, like if I can't even imagine how awesome this game would be if it had a developer like that. Because I mean, the, this game is awesome, right? But the, a lot of the big problems that we have with, I'd say like ninety percent of the big problems that we have with with this game is all derived from from you know choices that Fox Next makes. Yeah, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, did you did uh, AFK hit ten million yet? Oh yeah, it hit like it hit ten million a long time ago. Oh nice! So you guys got the free Athalia. Yep. Very we also nice. Got, uh, yeah, we got uh, another free character recently too. For it got like three hundred fifty k likes on on Facebook and stuff like that. It's, oh, that's it's nice. It's an incredibly popular game. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I I do somewhat miss it, but some of the artwork started to get a little bit raunchy, so and for Is me, that why you left? Yeah, that, I mean, like that's why I left you know, Langrisser and stuff own. too. Um, I just, uh, I just don't want to, I don't, I don't do well with those things. So, yeah. um, you know, and, and I'll like, pick your brain about it later on. Cause I, I want to know which character specifically, cause I can't think of any that are like the temptress. Oh, cause she's like a succubus, so right. she's supposed to be like which that, makes sense yeah. for her, for what she's supposed to be. But 
I just I I didn't want to get back into that type of stuff. So yeah, I feel um, like. I, other than that, it's, it's pretty tame. Not that yeah. I, oh I, yeah. But yeah. Um. But anyways, yeah. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. But yeah. So did that. Um. Finally got my last maneuver piece to drop. So that's cool. So I've officially entered fear of the darkness. Um. Working through that, going very slow. Uh. But that's cool. Who are you, you running know? for that team? Uh, right now it's Rocket, Star Lord, Groot, um, Shield Security, and then Minerva. Okay. Do you have anybody else at T thirteen yet? Yeah, I have a couple of the people at T thirteen. Who else do you have? Uh, Nick Fury. Okay. And then I think like three others. I have to start up my game and and go back through. That's okay. You said the one guy I wanted to hear. Drop yeah, I mean, Rocket. Nick Fury- I Drop Rocket, add Fury. Yeah, I'll give that one a go. Um, in the re- so when you want to set it up, you want to set it up so Star Lord's on a corner, Minerva's right behind him, then mm. Fury in the middle, and then uh, Groot and Shield Security. Right. Uh, mm. That way, Star Lord is always feeding energy to Minerva. Fury on yeah, crit has a chance too. to feed energy to Minerva. Mm-hmm. Um, you could take Groot out of there, but I probably wouldn't because of the death proofs. I personally, li- yeah, like, I personally like him in there. I mean, the, I, I will say the way I'm going through right now, honestly, it's it's not not too much of a problem. It's more of just like it's, you know, the the levels just take a while to clear. They do. You know I, I mean? think I was taking them like thirty <laughs> to forty five minutes sometimes. To, but you should be able to one shot most levels. Exactly. Uh, so, I think I one shot everything but like two or three levels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just, yeah, each level takes a while. That's that's the only reason why it's it's just a commitment of time per level. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's I honestly it's it's been very smooth so far. So yeah, uh, uh, I will tell you that Fury will help you out a bit more than Rocket, primarily because Rocket does that great burst damage, mm-hmm. um, and he and he's really good at like that single target. But Fury Fury's thing is the. Uh, the minions Mm -hmm. because those minions die very quickly and very easily Mm -hmm. but every time one of those minions die Minerva's getting basically a turn so or she's getting speed bar right Mm -hmm. so she's getting that that because that bleed uh her ultimate is what will clear every node for you yeah I just like I, I just like having the nuke with with rocket um but Either way, yeah, it's uh, I fully think that that will work very well. Also, yeah, so I, I will definitely give that one a, a plug. And a yeah, try. because I tried it. I started with Rocket, and I was like, "This is okay," but <clears throat> um, excuse me, uh, but I yeah. Once I got once I got uh, Minerva, I took Rocket out and ran Fury, and mm. it was it was it was smooth sailing. So. Um, yeah. So Evan, I uh, sorry, I just saw Evan in chat. Evan, I talked about you last show, by the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we won't have to stick on it, but either way, um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, so doing that, I'm I'm glad that I finally got that Minerva piece and everything. So moving forward, can't wait to get Ultron. Super excited, which um, I know you'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> and uh maybe yeah maybe yeah that's that's pretty much it for me though so what about you well uh so yes i did finish fear of the darkness on sunday um i'm not gonna lie i dropped five dollars <laughs> to core again because I, I had it down i had <laughs> it down to uh like uh i got rid of ultron and there were only like four people left and it was like early sunday morning and I'm like, I'm I'm not waiting a full day to get Ultron. It, it's worth five bucks to me to to get some cores to refresh my right. guys <laughs> to finish this yeah. node. So, uh, it's it he is crazy amazing. Uh, I don't know if you have saved up uh, purple gear, but I would start. Yeah, I've I've already been saving for a bit on it because yeah. I, I mean I had I had time to save because I was just waiting for that one piece for so long for Minerva. So right. I was already prepping for Ultron. So nice. Yeah. So, uh, it's the purple spiky balls and the, and the purple torches. 
that yeah. are just absolutely murder. I think you need like 330 spiky balls or something like that. So yep. <laughs> it's been absolutely crazy. Um, Deacon actually said uh, Magneto, and I will agree. I know I said something kind of against Magneto earlier, but uh, having played now through that final node with Magneto when you're facing Ultron, that that is a nightmare. Uh, that one actually took me a lot of runs. I was actually in the node. I want to say late Friday, early Saturday, and it mm. took me it took me a few good runs to get in there because. What happened to me was I, I killed just enough that they didn't drop in game, but when I restarted the node, it was full again. So oh, really? yeah, so I would have like two venom, uh, two shield uh, security, uh, the trooper and pyro and the uh, merc lieutenant, and it was just like I I just killed two troopers. Why am I having to kill trooper again? <laughs> So yeah. it was it was a nightmare. So uh, so Captain Murdoch just asked, "How's Ultron on an aim team?" You know, I haven't tried that yet. I was just typing. I hear one fifth of that thing is great. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not entirely wrong. Hopefully, we're gonna get. Hopefully, we're gonna get uh, an aim rework soon. And I think it may be coming sooner rather than later. And we'll. I we'll, got my seven star, seven star science supreme waiting in the wings. Uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be uh, talking about just a little bit later why I think uh, we are going to be getting an aim rework soon. So, uh, but then, so I I, I want to share this because this is this is absolutely hilarious. I was working from home yesterday. And it was relatively early, and my wife had gone to the grocery store. And my kids are not in school yet, so they were kind of sleeping in. So around 8.30, 9 o'clock, I'm sitting here and I'm working. And all of a sudden, I hear this, I hear this scream uh, from the hallway. And my daughter comes running in. There's uh -huh. a frog in our toilet. <laughs> what the fuck? A tree frog had gotten into the house. It has made it had made its way to their bathroom and was sitting on the toilet seat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Burn it all. <laughs> Start anew. Oh man. So I put on I put on uh uh some 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 gloves, right? Mm -hmm. And I and I grabbed the thing. Man, it just started pissing all over the place. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's nasty. So we cleaned it. With, so I finally got it, grabbed it, got a hold of it, man. I'm, and it, I'm glad I had the gloves because it was, it was just, it was just urinating all over my hand. I'm just like, oh man. Ugh. So I finally got it outside, and uh, I need this. I need to send pictures. I've got pictures. Uh, but yeah, apparently it got back inside and was in the house today. It was That's hanging on the wall. Frog. It was a tenacious frog. At so, that point. Yeah, I just I'll give the house to the frog. I'm leaving. <laughs> so it was just it was because I'm like, how did it get? Did it, wait, I, I I know I've got a septic system, but there's it's a closed system. Wait, is there a problem in my septic? Because that yeah, was my first septic, thought. Like, is there problems. a hole in my pipe somewhere? But I yeah. think it came from. So what happens is our back porch we have a an LED light uh, for when we take the dogs out at night. And it's on a it's on a uh, a motion sensor, so mm -hmm. it light it it lights up really easily. So it tracks lots of bugs and, by extension, frogs. And I think what happened was my boys had taken the dogs out before going to bed, and the frog just got in the house. Yeah. So, uh, uh, uh snake seat frogs. Snakes yeah, and I have I have so. those around here too. <laughs> I've I've only seen like two snakes in person, but I, I never want to see another one again. Yeah, and that question, by the way, for those listening at home, was uh, somebody had mentioned that uh, uh, Moon mentioned that frogs eat the bugs, and then Hebrew asked, "But what eats the frogs?" So snakes, snakes eat the frogs. I, I like Riker said the French, and he's he's right. Uh, and then <laughs> Devin, my my plot sound mountain cur. Uh, she doesn't want to eat them. She just loves sniffing them, maybe licking. We think she may have licked one of these tree frogs because she's been acting a little strange. So, um, anyway, 
Uh, that is our what did you do this past week? And we are going to move on now, uh, Hebrew, to everybody's favorite segment, poll oh, results. God. Yay. So. <laughs> that is everyone's favorite. It is everybody's favorite. Let's so, just go straight to that. Let's go straight to that, and we'll else. skip Rose Watch 2019. So yes. uh, this week, the roses were doing beautifully. Uh, put more seven dust Ugh. on them, and these things are just blooming like there's no tomorrow. I've still got one that's a little stunted. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, my wife loves it because she goes out and she'll clip a couple of the roses in the morning and just put them in a in a glass on the on the coffee table. Uh, so. <laughs> that's a little rude man I don't do that to you uh, but we have to be a little careful because one of our cats loves to eat the roses and since we put poison on the roses she gets sick and she throws up so Jeez. yeah uh, so uh, Riker asked for pictures I will have to do that I'll get some pictures uh, tomorrow when it's daylight and then uh, post them I'll send them to you Riker <laughs> I'll make a special channel for Rose Watch for for all the Rose lovers. So, uh, Hebrew thought he was going to get a week without Rose Watch, but look at it, man! You're going to have two coming up. Yeah, that's true. So very true. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the uh, listener survey for this week. So this week, uh, we asked about uh, the Beta Raid. And the news of the Fantastic Four, both of which we're going to cover a little bit later in the news segment itself. But right now, uh, Hebrew, let's start with the Beta Raid. And what level of Beta Raid is your alliance doing? Doing the Beta Four. You're doing the Beta Four? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, we are as well. And it looks like a majority of our listeners are as well. Majority of our respondents, at least. Uh, so I had, there was a, there was a small, a small problem. If you're looking at the results, Hebrew, <laughs> there's a beta mm -hmm. four and a beat four. <laughs> the original oh, was yeah. beat four and, and I didn't catch it until later and I changed it, but then it added a new result. So I'm like, Ugh, that sucks. So anyway, yeah. it looks like we have 94 people doing the beta four, uh, out of 106 respondents, uh, Eight were doing the beta three, and three were doing the beta two. Uh, the next question was, how far is your alliance progressing? So, uh, Hebrew, how far are you guys getting in the beta four? We're also getting, like, we get to 60, and then we usually are just like, meh, that's enough. Like, we could push further, but 60 is where we usually are stopping. Because this, like, no one really is a huge fan of the orb for this one. You know? Right, no, I, I, I feel you on that one. Yeah, uh, we're also getting uh, we're between the sixty and ninety nine. Um, unfortunately, I think people didn't quite understand the how the how the columns were set up. So the numbers here were a bit off because we had way too many respondents in the beta one, two, and three, <laughs> 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 and not enough in the beta four. So, uh, yeah. We're just gonna we're just gonna kind of go on from there. Um, sorry about that, guys. That that one did not that one did not work out the way I'd hoped to. Uh, but Hebrew, what did you guys think of the node changes from Spider Verse to Sinister Six? Mm, not not for me because I didn't I didn't do very much of Sinister Six, you know. Yeah, me either. The nice thing is, though, is that it wasn't Sinister Six only nodes. Yeah. So I took in tech. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, you can take in. Yeah, you can take in tech. <laughs> well, yeah, Ultron is really team. nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. You have Ultron and, and Vision and uh, Minerva I mean, I, I and can, Star Lord I can and Rocket. Yeah, I mean, I have those ones too. But I mean, Vision like really is like the man in a tech team you know what he's like he that really glue that holds everything together and because i'm a, a stubborn idiot like you know my principles outweigh everything else in life yeah so. we'll break it you, you'll you'll get broke of that at some point at Maybe least we'll at least as far it. as this <laughs> we'll see uh so i i wasn't a huge fan mainly because 
like you, I mean, I have all the Sinister Six unlocked, but mm. I don't have them built up. I mean, they just released. They're yep. not that great. Exactly. And yeah. it's like, I mean, sure, the whaliest of whales are going to put a lot of, into this, uh, but, you know, they're without, from what I understand, without Vulture, that team really just doesn't work anyway. Mm. But, you know, so, yeah, not a fan. So 78 respondents said no, and 28 said yes. Mm. Uh, and then I, I, the next question was, do you have Sinister Six to be able to do the nodes, yes or no? Uh, to do them or do them efficiently? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, the, I, that's the real so, answer. And, and, and I, I guess I was being a little bit more implicit than explicit. Mm. So I, I I was trying to imply, do you have Sinister Six to be able to competently do these nodes? Do it, yeah. Right? And, and not just, so do you have Sinister no. Six? Yeah, so for me, it's no. Yeah, same for me. 94 of our respondents also said no. Uh, 12 said yes. Yeah. Um, then we moved on to our next segment, because this week we got some rather big news. Yeah. And I'm going to... Actually, Heber, I'm gonna. I need to ask this question on next week uh, to find out if people would be interested. I have not done like a an, an embargo podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know, being an envoy, I do get the information early. But I, I, I haven't done like a special report podcast. I think I did it once. But I wonder if our listeners would be interested in that. And I think I'm going to include that on the next survey. Remind okay. me when I do the surveys this week. Yeah. Um, but so we did get a uh, news drop Wednesday that the Fantastic Four uh, and Namor are coming to the game. And so that was what we are going to be talking about now. So, Hebrew, are you excited for the Fantastic Four coming to the game? I'm super excited for the Fantastic Four coming. I mean, it's 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 not like what they're meant for isn't particularly my favorite mode at all everyone knows that uh that's ever listened to me but um but yeah nonetheless i'm excited for them to be in the game i wasn't sure who in the world namor was <laughs> but <laughs> um but yeah I'm, I'm excited for fantastic four to come at least I am too, and I actually am going to uh, kind of counter one thing that you said. Not mm -hmm. that you don't like war, because we all know you don't like war. But yeah. like the Fantastic Four themselves, we have not seen any of their kit. And well, even judging Namor, from the passives, I said uh, there's 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 only one that discusses war, and that's Namor. No, 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 no. But there's two uh, abilities in passives. Uh, what you call it? Flame Dude, Human Torch, and, uh, uh, gosh, <sighs> Mr. Fantastic. That would work really well in War. Yes, but they don't get the War bonus. No, no, no. Right? no I know that. So yeah, I think that's, that, that I think is what I'm talking about, war. because I, I think they're going to be good in War, but I'm, I'm not sure that they're going to be only for War. I think that fifth slot's yeah. going to be a little open uh, to interpretation. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but let me get back over here because I wanted to take. I had to jump back over to my notes on there. But uh, so uh, Hebrew, who is your favorite Fantastic Four character? Human Torch. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anybody. I, Reed Richards actually is my favorite, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't think you can go wrong with with uh, really any of them. Uh, His power just seems lame to me as well. So he's it's it's not just his ability to stretch. He's also you know super intelligent genius. Yeah, I, I know you that. Know, the scientist. Right? And I respect and, that part of it, but yeah, just the. I mean, the main ability to just be able to stretch is just boring to me. Ah, uh, I I don't know. I I disagree. And I'm I, so I when I read comics, they were kind of an escapism, right? And they mm -hmm. they still are, but. Uh, I, I read them also for the for the personalities of the individuals, mm -hmm. right? And I I wasn't really a fan of Storm um, and the whole the whole attitude. Mm -hmm. So it just it just kind of his from his power level, absolutely, he's awesome. Uh, right, but his personality really always threw me off. But a majority of people agreed with you. Uh, Thirty eight uh, liked. Uh, uh, Johnny Storm 
Uh, next was uh, Ben Grimm with 31. Uh, Sue and Nunn tied at 14, and then Reed had the least at 9. So I was I was in the minority there. Right. Uh, do you like that Namor is going to be added? Yes or no? Uh, I mean, I guess so. It's it's one of those things where it's, uh, you know, I, I had no idea who he was until just a little bit ago whenever you, you told me who he was. Um, because I was going to just ask on the show. That's why I didn't look it up beforehand whenever they first announced it. That kind of amazes um, me, to be honest with you, that you didn't, I mean, I... I, no I, idea. The Submariner. I, Never I'm older. Heard of it. I'm older. I read older comics, so mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he's been in newer stuff because I stopped reading comics full time, like you know, a lot in the early to mid '90s, and have only yeah. recently started back up, but yeah. not really with Marvel. So not yet, anyway. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just, uh, he he seems like a cool character, so I'm glad for that. Uh, I would have, I, I wish that I would have gotten something like Doctor Doom instead, but, you know, that wouldn't have made too much sense if they had synergy together, so. Right, well, uh, Doom, unless, the Silver there's probably Surfer. Some team-ups. Yeah, Silver Surfer would have been a good one, too, but there's probably a team-up out there where Doctor Doom joins forces with the Fantastic Four, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, absolutely. That'd be super cool. Uh, so, uh, I'm I'm okay with Namor being added to the game. So, you know, I I kind of like that he's being added. I like, I like seeing kind of the some of the some of the less well known characters get some get some light. Mm-hmm. So, I, I and I really think that part of the reason why Namor is is added is because he goes all the way back to like 1939, right? And we are coming yep. up on the 80th anniversary for uh, uh, Marvel, which mm-hmm. means it makes sense for one of their very first characters to be included in the game and then get the get the 80th trait, which we'll talk about later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the community kind of agreed with this. 77 said yes. Uh, 29 said no. I think those 29 probably would have preferred to see, like you said, Doctor Doom uh, or the Silver Surfer. You know, yeah. both of those really, really kind of shine out there. I, I really think that the the Richards kid would have been a, a good one as well. Um, so their, their son has powers. Oh, their son, their son's like an Omega level mutant. Really? Oh yeah. What what what's his power? Uh, let's see. He's telekinetic. Um, mm. he can get down to his power lo- power list here. Uh okay so uh oh I'm Can sorry bend reality he's beyond time? he's beyond a mega level uh <laughs> let's see so here's his his powers right so an adult version uh of Franklin uh has mentifree uh the ability to man- manipulate reality on a pocket universal scale universal mm-hmm. scale with his imagination and thoughts uh he's got particle energy manipulation. Uh, so he can, he has the ability to manipulate and emanate and uh, emanate emit dynamic force as well as rearrange and manipulate matter on a quantum <laughs> level. Uh, chronokinesis. He has I mean, the ability. Captain, Captain Murdoch just told me all I need to know. Galactus stays away from Earth specifically to stay <laughs> away from Franklin Richards. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. You know what? Um, Galactus became Franklin's herald at one point. <laughs> yeah, uh, Franklin. Franklin is th- th- probably one of the most powerful beings in the in the uh, in the. So universe. he should be the legendary. Uh, well, yeah. Here's <laughs> here's 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 Franklin, and if you want to scroll down to his uh, list of powers, you can read them all. I don't want to go through them all on the show. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. not doing a character spotlight on him today. So, uh, yeah. And get back to the man. You got you got disconnected. I'm all di- discombobulated. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then our final question was: uh, Which game modes do you think the Fantastic Four will be good in? Arena, Blitz, Raids, or War? Yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be meant for War, just because they have a lot of synergy to do with uh, Namor specifically, and he's meant for War. And then I think that two of the characters have. Uh, even just their passes, we don't know the rest of them yet. But 
even just their passives deal with a lot of uh, buff related stuff and debuff stuff so yeah yeah that's my that's my only guess as to why but yeah I, I didn't see that. I mean, I can understand where, where you know, that would come, you know. But at the same time, I don't... Yes, I think they're going to be good in war, but I also think they're going to... They are probably going to be an arena viable team. Oh, I mean, for sure. I think they will be. But I, I just think that they were... I, I think that they were made, like, the five of them together were made for... With, with war in mind, is all. Yeah. I can, I can, I can see where. Most, I, I yeah, want to see the war both, teams are easily translated into arena and blitz teams. You know, at blitz at least. I don't know about arena. I don't know if I don't um, know if because power armor. You, nobody's running power armor in high levels of, of arena. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, for instance, you could you could take like X Men. They'll kick ass in arena. Yeah, but X Men were also designed for in... war. They were kind of designed to be in arena. No, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I'm not saying that they that they were designed for, but I'm just saying like those are easily translatable. Like they're god mode in arena. They're also going to be god mode in war. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I feel I feel like that's kind of a corollary. I think that arena teams will be good in war, but war teams will not be good in arena. Uh, I think that yeah. I mean, I think that there is more of that but i still think that you're going to get a good one for either no matter what either way it doesn't matter yeah not not but, a big deal but yeah. yeah so uh 27 people said arena so this was a multi-select so 27 people said arena uh war was the biggest uh at 78 uh blitz was the second biggest with 50 uh raids at 28 and arena at 27 so hmm. i would have probably gone uh you know, blitz arena and war. I don't know about raids. Mm-hmm. Maybe with a with a I different don't think fifth, were. but it, there would definitely have yeah. to be a different fifth. Um, I mean, you gotta you gotta have sustain, and I don't I don't see any sustain in that team. Nope. Oh, granted, maybe, we don't have the full kits, but I just I feel like I would have seen something in someone's passive. Yeah, that's that's a fair assessment. Plus, so, I, I also like we we've had uh, like legendary, you know, teams for everything other than war yet you know what i mean like a team with a legendary character we've had one for yeah you know, i for raids i'm still we've not ones. i'm still not sold on on sue being the legendary character i just yeah, i don't i think, I don't that, think that, that was a little was... segment that you had so I'll, we'll yeah. wait until we get down to that and that's <laughs> fine because because that was our poll for the week uh the our listener yeah. survey um so, Hebrew, without any further ado, why don't we jump into the news, since we were kind of yeah, talking about it. it. And, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we did get the news that the Fantastic Four were coming to the game. And kind of the biggest shock to me about this was, A, Namor being kind of the fifth. Um, not that he's not that he's being added, but that and, – and he did have some uh, things that he did with the Human Torch early on, but not with – Johnny Storm, who is the second Human Torch, um, there was an Android Human Torch back in back in thirty nine forty. Oh. So, and that's that's who Namor spent a lot of time with during like World War Two and stuff. But I don't buy Invisible Woman as a legendary character. I'm sorry, she's just her kit better be damn explosive because she may be ranked right there with Shuri as the worst legendary. Or Iron Man. Yeah, Take Shuri, your pick. Shuri as a legendary didn't make any sense to me thematically. Like, that was definitely the worst. Yeah, and um, Invisible Woman's right there with me. I just think... I mean, like, it's just like, she didn't even have any powers. So, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get why she was in there. But um, well, it, well, then okay. again, Tony Stark doesn't either. But well, yeah, but Tony's Tony's got the suit. I mean, Sherry has yeah. has she just has like gloves. a glove a glove thing. <laughs> She's got gloves, <laughs> and it's just like, oof, you know. Yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah, we're both on the same page about that one. But yeah. for whenever it comes with uh, comes to Sue, like at least she has power, so I'm not like super opposed to it, but. I don't know. Like, I don't really know who the standout is in that group anyways. Who I mean, says maybe. it has to be one of the Fantastic Four? Look, mm-hmm. if you're going to include the Fantastic Four, there are two legendaries that immediately jump to mind. 
Silver right? Surfer, Doctor Doom. Silver Surfer, Doctor Doom. Yeah. Either one of those would have been an awesome legendary I character. And yeah. I I think that I think Sue as a legendary is just I I don't know what they're trying to do with the the legendary concept. Mm -hmm. because at this point I almost feel like every name team that we get is going to get a legendary character Sinister Six did not they did not that's fair it seems like every other I think but Wakanda Shuri Power Armor Iron Man even though he was legendary before we had Power Armor but but he's still a power he's still a legendary for that team X-Men we got Phoenix Mm mm-hmm for the Sinister Six, he's not a legendary, but Mysterio is kind of difficult to get, if, unless you're going to mm. drop money on the orbs, right? And mm. now we've got uh, the Fantastic Four with the Invisible Woman. And I just, I feel like the last few synergistic teams, barring mm. the Sinister Six, have really kind of focused around having a legendary with them as well. And I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. I don't know why they're doing it, but it's... Oof. Um, Captain Murdoch asked uh, if the blog said that Sue was the legendary. It didn't actually say that in the blog. It said it in the in-game mail. Yeah, there was an in-game mail yeah. that was talking about her, and she's going to be a legendary character. Yeah, it says specifically that she's going to be the legendary. Um, but yeah, no, it's you know, I I do kind of think that it's it's an every other kind of thing, but I. I I don't like – I think that they're usually pretty good with the legendaries. The only one that I don't like for a legendary so far was just uh, – what's her face? Cherie? And then <laughs> and then Sue, I'm just on the fence about. I'm not as opposed to it. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's certainly not great because you're right. I, like I would have definitely liked Silver Surfer or, or Doctor Doom. I mean it makes – and and plus I even I, like someone who, who – doesn't know much about the Fantastic Four. Even I can make those associations. You know what I mean, right? And and like I said, I don't even know who the heck Namor is. So. Yeah. And look, look. I, I, let me tell you everything you need to know about Namor. Right. Mm-hmm. At one point, he was a homeless guy with amnesia. Okay. And that's where that's where they kind of found him. <laughs> okay, so it kind of had like the Iron Fist thing. Uh. Worse. Hmm. Danny Rand kind of Danny Rand knew who he was. He wasn't. He wasn't. Oh he yeah, that's have, right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's I'm right. not sure. Yeah, the Iron Fist kind of threw me there for a second. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, I was just thinking because he was kind of like homeless, like whenever he went to New York City. Well, yeah, by I don't choice. Know why I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I kind of associated that with he lost his memory. Yeah. No, but, he was an he was a homeless amnesiac. Interesting. So yeah, so uh, I mean, you know, whatever he's he, he's what is he again? He's the he's the prince of Atlantis, right? Right. Yeah, and his and his, yeah. and his and his his and his hero name is the Submariner. He also looks kind of evil to me in the in-game model. So he's done some shady shit. <laughs> I, somebody mentioned it in chat. Uh, he kidnapped Sue to be his wife, lover, whatever. That's super rapey, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, there was a there was a lot of um, uh, right bad bad guys do bad things, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, he the I I guess it matches up because he looks like I said he looked kind of evil to me. So yeah, he's gone. He's uh, he has definitely uh, been good and done some shady stuff as well. So yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah. So real quick, why don't we have a let's talk really quick about uh, the passives that they are coming with. So the Human Torch, he his passive reads on turn flip two negative effects on self to positive effects, gain plus thirty percent damage, and then Fantastic Four and Namor allies gain plus thirty percent damage, gain plus ten thousand percent resistance against bleed. It is. This feels like a direct uh, Magneto, Pyro, Venom. Yeah, yeah counter uh, Minerva. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, the thing, 
is uh, his passive is when he's attacked, he will attack that enemy for 150% damage. He will gain 20% armor. And then Fantastic and Namor allies will also gain 20% armor. Very nice. Um, hold on, I want to see something here real quick. They did not talk about the Fantastic Four in the latest update. Did you want to, by the way, did you want to talk about each one of their passives as we go? Or did you want yeah, to just like. I was kind of pausing afterwards? to give you a chance to discuss them. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I, th- I thought we were just going to talk like talk about it in general afterwards, though, after all of them. Uh, but that's let's fine. let's go ahead and kind of go into each one individually here, uh, sure, sure, because sure. is that way that way everything is a little bit more fresh on the mind, and we can and we can kind of respond to certain things in uh, in a more specific manner. Okay, so yeah, so for me, the Human Torch, uh, like I said, I, I do agree. Like I, I think that that already from what we can see, I think that that is definitely. Uh, set up to work very well against um, the uh, jug or not juggernaut team brotherhood team right uh, but yeah I, I do think you know flip two negative effects on self um, to positive effects that that's huge that's really really nice so and I think that that would be pretty good in war too especially so <laughs> um, <laughs> but that and then uh, you know the fact that he has synergy with um, Namor, uh, going to be pretty good. It's yeah, like, I'm curious to see what his damage is, his, his base stat damage is, and his speed. Yeah, but so far so good, I'd say. Now, uh, by the way, uh, Torch will be a blaster. Uh, yeah, and if you read, so let me read this real quick. So this is the sure. the mail we got in game uh, yesterday, August first. Blast your roster with cosmic rays by building the versatile powerhouse, the Fantastic Four. Claw our top tier offenses and blitz an arena with the Thing, Brawler, Human Torch, Blaster, mm-hmm. Mr. Fantastic, Controller, and their legendary character, Invisible Woman, Protector. Our first legendary protector. Uh, add the brawling war specialist Namor as the fifth member and turn the Fantastic Four into the rulers of war. The first Fantastic Four member is on the way, so be on the lookout for more details. So, yeah, I mean, going back a little bit, it definitely looks like they're being designed to be a PvP team. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, I don't think raids are going to be something uh, that they are going to be good in. But it yeah. does. I do worry whenever they tell me they're going to take on top-tier offenses because Wakanda. But, anyway. Oh, yeah, I just, I straight up, I don't trust anything they say about how good they they should be from their right. mouth. I judge it off of what I see from their kits. Yeah. Because at this point, I'm a better judge than they are at <laughs> their own content. So, I mean, as is, as is like 90% of the population of this game. So, yeah, I think that um, you're better off judging it for yourself rather than listening to anything they say. Uh, so, moving on to the thing, who is going to be a brawler. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he's attacked, he will attack that enemy for 150% damage. He will gain plus 20% armor, and then the Fantastic Four and Namor allies gain plus 20% armor. He's got a he's got kind of a cyclopsy feel to him. Without protection. Why why cyclopsy feel? Uh doesn't Cyclops have something in his passive where if he's attacked, he he basically attacks that person. He's got a built-in counter. Just uh, I'm pretty ooh, sure remember, I'm pretty sure maybe. he does. It tells yeah, me but, how often you play the X Men, or it tells me how for, often I play the X Men for Cyclops. Mm, who am I thinking of then? If it's not Cyclops, that well, tells Cyclops me how long I play the Cyclops. Isn't even out yet. No, I'm, I meant I meant Colossus. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm and sorry. You, I meant Colossus. <laughs> I meant Colossus. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay. Um. So yeah, I mean, I I, th- I think he's definitely going to end up being being kind of like, uh, yeah, a little bit like a, a Colossus. For this. Well, no, not really, because Colossus is just like mega tank. Well, Colossus has def- on his passive. If he's charged, he will attack. He will attack. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're right. So yeah, and that and that stage it, it does. I was really surprised that he's not going to be the tank. Um. Yeah, I was really surprised. I, yeah, I don't really get that even. 
because if I had to pick, if I had to pick either Colossus or no, nah, you know what? Colossus makes more sense as a as a tank than a brawler, I suppose. I was thinking if I had to pick between the two, which one's going to be a brawler and a and a tank? I would probably pick uh, the inverse of what it is. But nah. yeah, and um, the thing is, a brawler makes sense to me. I mean, look, his catchphrase is "It's clobbering time." Right, that's he's true. not he's not there. I mean, there. Cyclops absorbs damage. You know, Ben kind of. I mean, yeah, he's got the rocky exterior, but he can be he can be hurt. He's yeah, he's almost got Hulk level power. Almost. He always just like I've never liked the thing because I think he's just like a <laughs> really crappy version of the Hulk. So, uh, yeah. But either way, yeah, you know what? You're right though. The clobber in time thing. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Um, so yeah, either way though, it'll be cool. I, I really, once again, this, this is more telling with base stats. Right. So I can see what his, what his, uh, power is going up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, either way, you know, uh, interesting, you know, uh, attack so far. Uh, so next we've got Mr. Fantastic. And so Mr. Fantastic's passive, this one, this was kind of a novel here. Yeah. So, uh, gain 20% resistance. Uh, Fantastic Four and Namor allies gain plus 20% resistance, gain plus 20% focus. Fantastic Four and Namor allies gain plus 20% focus. On self and each Fantastic Four allies turn, 100% chance to apply assist now to self, Namor, or a random uh, uh, Fantastic Four ally. If assist now is applied, clear blind on that target. On turn, choose three random enemies. If they have a positive effect, remove one. There's a lot going on here with his uh, with his so kit, much. and he will be he will be a controller. Mm-hmm. So we do have one of everything on this team. So that's that's nice. Yeah. Um. I mean, <sighs> gain resistance, gain focus. Okay. I, I want to see what what kind of buffs debuffs are going to be applied here. If if the Human Torch doesn't apply bleed, I'm going to be really surprised considering what Pyro does. Mm-hmm. So having having uh, you know Torch and Invisible Woman uh, have high focus, yeah. and then everybody having the high resistance is is really kind of nice. Now that he's kind of got that that Miss Marvel feel to him with that uh, assist now. Yeah. And very <laughs> anti, very anti Magneto. Yeah. So Magneto's going to go first, and if if you're going With against a full Brotherhood team, he's going to blind everybody, right? And then, yeah. and then, really, you know, Mister Fantastic is going to be like, nope, done. You know, mm-hmm. and then hopefully he doesn't choose the Human Torch because the Torch is just going to flip him off himself. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't need to do anything for the Torch, but. Yeah, you know, once again, very, very useful. It's funny how, like, you look at a character like, um, what's his face? I don't even remember his name now. It's been so long since we've used him. Yondu. And, like, it's just, like, one one little part of his, of his passive is Yondu's entire passive. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, that's where we've evolved now. That's power creep, though. I know. It, it, that's that's exactly what I mean. Like that exemplifies power creep in this game. Um and not to mention that, but it also does it way better too. <laughs> Even just that one part. So uh yeah, either way, you know, really good. I mean, the team looks, you know, we, we basically are shown the door, but the rest of the of the room is dark, so we don't right. you know, know too much, but from what it looks like so far, like these are some really nice interacting passives that i see yeah and i can see that there's a goal that they're going towards so um i think that they're going to be really well-rounded and i think that they're going to be really hard to uh buff and debuff i'm sorry uh, that they're going to be really hard to debuff and really good at debuffing potentially yeah we'll have to see what their resistance looks like i mean if, you know mr fantastic uh giving them plus 20 percent obviously is huge but mm-hmm. you know Twenty percent of a hundred is only twenty, so you know it really is going to depend on what level they're at right now. You know, mm-hmm. so the base stats are going to make a difference. Yeah, that that, that is very true. Um, 
So next we've got the legendary protector, our first legendary protector. I think I mentioned that before. Uh, mm -hmm. Sue Richards, the invisible woman, and her passive. When an enemy attacks a Fantastic Four ally with barrier, so she's going to be applying barrier, attack mm -hmm. that enemy for 250% damage. She gains 20% max health. Fantastic Four and Namor allies gain plus 20% max health. So I, I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see what her base damage is because if, she, if she's fast enough to apply barrier early, she's mm -hmm. just going to be countering anybody that attacks someone on the team. Right. So she's going to be a protector with, with some good, with some potentially good damage output. Yeah. I mean, it also depends on how often she puts a barrier up on someone. We don't really know that yet. I have a feeling, I have a feeling it's going to be her special. Uh, it could be alt. I would imagine, I would imagine so. Um, cause it, it, if her passive is interacting with it, I would imagine that has come around a little more often than a, than an ultimate. You yeah. would hope, or the alt is uh, comes pre charged. If it's if it's on an alt, then it's pre charged, mm -hmm. and can yeah. can fire off turn one. Yeah, but even then, it's like then once that happens, you you've blown your load and you won't have it again for a while. Well, it depends think... on how much barrier she gives. So mm -hmm. that's that's that one true. right, uh, mm -hmm. and then it also depends on what the energy recharge is for that. Because hey, shoot, it could be a four energy for all we know. That's very true, yeah. So, I mean, you know, again, until we see the rest of the kits, I don't want to speculate too much. Um, yeah. But I do want to delve, I do want to break away from talking about the passives for one second, specifically about uh, about uh, uh, Sue, because she's a legendary. In mm -hmm. his recent discussion and live stream with Casino, there was a hint of an aim rework. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that aim could be necessary to unlock Sue? No. You don't, think, don't so? think so? I mean, look, no. they've already shown that they will go away from uh uh oh anything that makes any type of sense. Spider Verse for <laughs> Shuri. Right. Uh Mystic Controllers I just, I feel for like Phoenix. Aim is aim is pretty farmable though. And like we, it's been around for a while, so I feel like they would do that for a. They would do that for a. That didn't have a legendary in it. But so if you think about it, you know Phoenix was Mystic Controllers, which were you know they had all been in the game for a very long time and were easily farmable as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I say I say easily in kind of air quotes, but they were. I mean they were farmable, and depending on how much effort you wanted to put into it. I mean, you could, you know, a lot of people, like the top of my shard is nothing but Phoenix. I mean, I'm in like the mid 100s right now mm. and I'm seeing Ultron Phoenix all over the place. No, I know. By the way, guys, um, real quick, if you run Fury with Phoenix, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I target you all day, every day. Every time. Yeah. Every time. Well, uh, real quick, sorry, segue. Mm -hmm. no, Phoenix, okay, okay. Ph Phoenix applies stealth to everybody. And Fury just passes it back around to her, so you don't have to attack her. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. I, I appreciate that. You just kind of removed the the. You just took Dark Phoenix off the table. So don't run. Don't run Fury with Phoenix. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I. So getting back to it, I I kind of feel like the the hints of. I mean, look. Let's be honest. They announced mm -hmm. that she's a legendary. Yeah. I really, highly, highly, highly doubt that we're going to get her in August. I, I think that we're going to see her sooner than we're going to see AIM by like a decent bit. For some reason, I think we're not going to get AIM for a while. Uh, maybe that that's entirely possible. But I've just got I've got two words for you. Two words: mm -hmm. Coulson, Cyclops. We've been talking about Coulson and Cyclops for months yeah. now. And they are still not in the game. And who knows I mean, when they're coming into the to, game. Yeah, I mean, that could be applied to AIM as well, though. Uh, no, the AIM rework was just talked about like two weeks ago. Yeah, but Three? I don't think he said... Did, I don't think he, he said hinted, anything He hinted at it. Time. He hinted at it, right? As it, as it could, you know... 
as there there was kind of some heavy handed hints, mm-hmm. and there are some things that like uh, Casino he was on with Valley and dropped mm-hmm. some dropped some hints of upcoming characters, and there were some things that he said that kind of indicated that to me at least there were there were some key key ways he phrased some things that kind of indicated mm-hmm. I think we had this conversation off. Uh, he offline, some, he did some casinoisms. Yeah, right. Where yeah. he was talking about you know over the top stuff, and and I think yeah, you and yeah. I had that conversation about you know well if you look at like the roster, what's over the top of everybody on the roster, mm-hmm. right? It's aim, and and I just you know I mean I mean you could very well be right, but I I for some reason I got the impression, and I would i would still think that we're not going to see him for a little while but then who i mean do you think you could, would be used it to unlock could definitely her. happen huh who do you think would be used on locker to unlock her oh i have no idea i mean who knows they could pull anything out of their ass they, they did it last time <laughs> oh this is true look there is no reason why so last time they decided mm-hmm. that phoenix was going to be a six star unlock mm-hmm. there is no reason to think that they wouldn't require the same for Sue or even a seven star unlock. Right. I feel like honestly, they, they have like an, a system that checks to see what the least farmable, um, group is basically, or, or yeah, either the least farmed or least farmable. So how many people do you think have actually farmed aim? Well, I mean, directly, not that many, but I mean, like, they're in stores and stuff like that, I think, right? Yeah, but There's, like, how many, two or three how, of them in the stores. Right, but if you only give people a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. the only way they're going to suddenly shift course. So, mm-hmm. let's let's use the Blitz store as a great example, right? Sure. Because yeah. Monstrosity is in the Blitz store. And so, in the Blitz store, we have Miles, we have Mantis, we have uh, Ant-Man, Spider-Man, Gamora, Crossbones, Luke Cage... All of whom you would take before a monstrosity. Uh, mm-hmm. Cree Royal Guard, you would take before a monstrosity, typically, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you did the orbs a lot, then you're you're going to get some a monstrosity shards, but you may or may not have gotten enough to get him to seven star. And it also depends on how long you've been playing the game. The, I, think, I mean, yeah, more depends on that than anything else. Right, and so that's why typically you see when legendary events come, they usually require newly released characters that are newly farmable characters, but we yeah, haven't we perfect. haven't really had any of those. Well, it's just when I look so like I haven't I haven't ever farmed aim specifically other than Scientist Supreme recently. And I have them at all like five and five and six stars minimum. So, so like just using and you know, I'm not like the best example, but just going off of that, that makes me feel like to get a legendary, they're not going to allow that to happen. Ah, I don't know. They could do it. I don't want to get you know too much into it because it, it's all just theories at this and it, point. And but... It could be a minions without mm-hmm. Scientist Supreme. And as somebody who which, actually which suck. F- farmed aim, mm-hmm. I do not have. I, if if it was a if it was even a five star unlock, I wouldn't be able to do it. For the aim minions, uh, yeah, for the aim minions, like my my security is uh, only one thirteen, and aim assaulter, who I just now ranked up, is mm-hmm. only eighteen of one thirty. So yeah, if they did if they did it without uh, scientist supreme, then it might be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I, and it, I mean they've set the bar before where just minions. So yeah we've, yeah, we've seen it. I don't know. I'm not look and look. Do we'll not see, yeah. do not hear me say, guys, it's going to be aim. Go farm them. I'm not saying that. I know one. I'm no speculating. One is hearing that. Yeah. Well, I look. I'm covering bases, right? <laughs> I'm just making sure people understand this is pure <laughs> spe- that, speculation. Yeah. yeah. If anyone hears that, that's their own fault at that point. But uh, yeah, no, I think you know could could be. We'll we'll see what happens with it. But yeah, I. I, I personally just think it's going to be like we're going to see Fantastic Four before we're going to see Aim rework. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah. So let's let's go ahead and continue on and talk about the the 
War Brawler Namor. And mm-hmm. so uh, his passive, uh, gain plus 20% damage, gain plus 30% armor on mm-hmm. war offense. Now, here's what I don't like, okay, before we go any further. Everything that I'm about to read only occurs in in war. Yeah. So he only gains the plus 20% damage and plus 30% armor outside of war. And mm-hmm. I, I don't like that. I, I really don't like the mode-specific stuff, but... Uh, on war offense and offense only on spawn apply offense up for two turns to all uh, Fantastic Four allies and self on spawn apply deflect for two turns to all Fantastic Four allies or self gain an additional 30% damage and then Fantastic allies also gain an additional 30% damage so this guy is definitely built for uh, for war and there's there's no well, doubt about it yeah and I think I think like it's very telling with all of the, cause like everyone else has bonuses that give to him too, for the most part. And so I just feel like they're all meant to be together for obvious reasons. And because one of them is heavy into war and the other ones have synergy that works well with war makes me think that it's going to be a war team. And, and judging from it, I think you could probably agree with that setup of the five of them, um, especially because of Namor's ridiculous passives with it. Right makes them a very, very, very good war team. I, on paper, I think they're least. I think they're a power armor level war team. Be honest. Yeah. Oh, I I absolutely agree. I mean, we need to see more of their kit, but if we are already kind of saying that just based on their passives, then I'm thinking that that's a pretty safe bet. You know. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think it could it could be uh, really argued uh, against. So. Yeah. Oh man, I missed that Pokemon. Glissopod. Why Glissopod. are you doing that right now? It, it's in the Poke. It's in the Pokecord channel. I'm sorry. Okay. For those of you that don't know, if you like Pokemon, we have a Pokecord channel on our Discord at discord.me forward slash ravager report, where you can basically collect Pokemon and 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 play Pokemon on Discord. So, uh, sorry, it, it, I got a notification of new unread messages. I scrolled down. <laughs> And you just happen to see what Pokemon just dropped, and I was like, I'm so sad. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And now we're getting just a bunch of, uh, hey, here's the here's the aim. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I really feel like these are uh, these are the outliers. I really feel like I I, I feel like a, a lot of people just didn't do it. Plus, there's the whole you're gonna have to have gold to rank these guys on, uh, rank them on, to rank them up level them up and gear them up so i mean there's I mean, a lot I'm that goes still, into it yeah plus i'm still getting like I, I it's having all of these new teams come out whenever alt 7 is right around the corner which with alt 7 will i mean i'm very certain we'll get level increase too yeah because they've been even talking about that for a while i'm very hesitant to spend gold yeah i don't blame you, you know? look i when I did, so a piece of advice, when you do Fear of the Darkness, hold every gold orb you get. Yeah, yeah. I wound up with 30 mm-hmm. and had enough to basically take Ultron immediately to like level 70 max abilities. Uh, in fact, he's he's level 70, all abilities are orange in tier 9. Yeah, exactly. That, that's my plan as well. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, by by then doing this. But then again, that's exactly what they want. Right. right? Well, yeah. I mean, he's, he's an in-game right tune. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I I don't know, guys. We'll, we'll have to see. So. I mean, I'm definitely I'm definitely going to go for this team. Um, even are though you gonna, I hate Are you going to spend? No, no, I'm not going to spend. By go, by go for it, I mean, like. I'm going to actively do the blitzes that partake with with all these characters, and um, I'm going to, yeah, just do min max everything I can from a free to play perspective to try to do, uh, you know, get these characters as high as I can. Fair enough. I probably, I mean, I I doubt I'll blitz much, but. <laughs> Yeah, never there's know. a line, and, and it, Blitz is it. Blitz is my <laughs> line. Blitz is my line. It just, it's just such a horrid game mode. Fair enough. Um, which, funny, I'm I'm actually kind of doing a bit on the Vulture right now. 
Mm-hmm. But that's that's only because uh, of reasons we're about to talk about. And I'm I'm basically doing the milestones. I'm probably gonna get like 1.5 and just stop. And I got two more days, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the reason being, uh, and Hebrew, is there anything else that you want to talk about with Fantastic Four before we move on? No, just they're they're shaping up to be a really really good team. That's they are it. shaping up to be a really good team. I I want to see more of their kit. We'll have to see what happens. So if the yeah. rest of their kit matches the power that we see out of their passives. I think I think we could be looking at a at a really solid team here. Uh, yeah. So today uh, there was a another store snafu, and <laughs> this is not unfortunately the first time this has happened with Fox Next. I pretty sure no, it won't be the like last a Thursday thing. Uh, and so yeah, oh there's a there's a store problem. Yeah, Fox Next yeah. we just call that Thursday. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so. It, it, what happened was, if you have the app installed through the Amazon App Store, the Amazon App Store's offers were different than Google Play and iOS Store. And what happened was, the so in iOS and Google Play, uh, Vulture was $19.99 for five of his orbs. The other... Uh, the Amazon store was a dollar ninety nine. So again, uh, Frank the intern misplaced at a decimal point. <laughs> so, that was Frank not fired because <laughs> he's an intern and he's not getting paid. So I <laughs> uh, now I'm not gonna lie. I took advantage of this. I uninstalled my game. I went to the Amazon App Store. I installed the game. I jumped in. I saw the offer and I was like, yes, please. And I bought it twice. And then I proceeded to open my 10 vulture orbs and got garbage. <laughs> so don't, Sounds don't, don't right. hate me because I got what you out got of my 10 punishment. orbs out of 10 orbs. I got eight, six shards, one, eight shard and one 12 shard. Basically I get a total of like 33 shards, uh, not counting what I've already gotten through blitz. So yeah. I didn't, uh, or not 33 shards. I got enough that I'm like sitting at 33 of 50 for like three stars. So I only got a two star vulture. Right. So, but the thing is, is that this offer was not available to people on iOS and Google Play. We did get a response from Fox Next. And I'm going to re- read that response really quick here. So give me, bear with me one second while I jump to the reddit responses here and uh so cerebro posted today hi all there are some offers showing up in certain app store fronts that have erroneous prices attached to them the team is currently investigating the problem and i'll report updates here as they are made available to me as it is currently getting late on a friday evening it's not likely that i'll have a full resolution to the situation tonight However, I assure you that I'll follow up with the dev team on Monday to discuss how we will respond to this. I appreciate your patience in the meantime. So I I really feel like there's only one proper response here. And that is you kind of give the offer to everybody. I mean, that's yeah. that's the proper response, but we'll have to see what happens. And this this isn't the only snafu they've had this week Mm -hmm. um but hebrew what do you think of what do you think of this whole uh storefront i'm honestly i'm honestly beginning to think that this is all basically like a marketing ploy Uh, honestly like it happens so often that i just don't believe it at this point because they then give out like an ep- another offer, right? They give out some some free stuff and then offers that are lower price that people can match, and then they feel more inclined to do so because these other people got an advantage because they got it for free, blah blah blah, or uh, got it for their discounted price. So then they're going to be ahead of you and all this kind of nonsense. So then they have a huge influx of people taking up these offers because it's a perceived slight. And so, I don't know. I honestly feel like it happens so often that I feel like there's something more to it. Maybe that's, like, maybe if I take off my tinfoil hat, I'll think differently. But I, uh, So, you and I kind of talked off air about this. And I'm, 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lay it out there and be completely honest. I I have concerns about their their knowledge of the inner workings of the game. Mm-hmm. And I say that because the company uh, w- was it Cryotic uh, that got bought out by Niantic, and I, we did have some issues before then, but we seem to be getting a lot more since then. And yeah. it's ta- it seems to be taking them longer to figure out or fix bugs in the game. So mm-hmm. I I wonder if this is an issue of they basically got handed a code base to the game that they weren't fully familiar with and they're kind of having to to learn as they go and that's oof, that's rough look as a developer who picks has to pick up new things it can take you time to to kind of understand a code base and ramp up that that's nothing against fox next but it it's it gives it gives me pause and as a developer it gives me pause and gives me concern and i don't know if that's what's going on and it's pure speculation but it, you know, it's tinfoil hatty, but it, it kind of, it kind of jives. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I just, it, no matter what way you cut it, it's not good because it's like, it's unbelievable that that they consistently mess up this much. You know what I mean? Like, that's the one thing I, I said this earlier to you. That's the one thing I actually can count on Fox Next to do consistently. Mess up, like, with their offers and put in bugs and things like that. Like, it, it's crazy. Compared to other games, like, I've never seen this before in any other game. So, I don't know. Either way, <laughs> I'm not surprised by this. And, yeah, there's probably going to be, you know, something put out for it. And we're going to get a little something, maybe. And then there's going to be another offer to match it. And we'll see what happens. But... It's just it doesn't surprise me. It's just another day in in MSF world. Yeah, I I don't know. And somebody asked in chat, does this does this happen in uh Galaxy of Heroes? And I'm and I'm I'm sitting here, I'm going, Boy, not really. Yeah. I can't I can't think of a time that it's come out. Not look, the snafus have happened in, in, in Galaxy of Heroes, but I can't think of a time that uh, an offer was nineteen ninety nine for one, but a dollar ninety nine for the guy next to you, just because he installed it from a different store. Yeah, and it and look, I understand how that happens because purchases within the game don't go to Fox Next; they go to the App Store to Fox Next. And I originally had thought, hey, maybe this is just an Amazon promotion and Amazon supplementing the cost. Now, mm-hmm. if if they come back and try to charge me for the nineteen ninety nine, I'm going to throw a fit. Oh yeah, I'm sure, but um, I don't think they will. But uh, you know, I I don't think they will. I don't know. And look, this isn't the first uh, uh, amazingly good dollar ninety nine offer I've bought from Fox Next, but this is the first one that actually I actually got. I, do you yeah. remember the Red Star dollar ninety nine snafu? Yes. yes yeah. I so I did that twice, and I didn't get my Red Star orbs. But I was like, yeah, it's like a dollar, two dollars. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not filing for refunds for that. That's gar- that's that's horrible. So that's just it, it's not worth that to me. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's I, I've legitimately not seen, not played another game, uh, especially mobile that has that has done this. Um, yeah. In fact, I'm hard pressed to even think of a time when there was something like that, a mess up on an offer, uh, let alone a multiple in such a small amount of time. Yeah. Consistently. So yeah, it's just it, I think you're right. I think it's probably, you know, mine's very tinfoily. Yours is a little tinfoily, but I think yours is probably more right than mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't put him past doing mine either right you know no I, mean? I i wouldn't no i i you know this i i don't know i don't know how you can i hate to say trust them um i think you're I think you're right to put it like that but uh oof. i would just i would just really like because i really like this game i really Wish that we could just give it to different developers. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I think different developers. I hate saying like, that because I don't want to see anybody obviously at Fox Next lose their job. Well, me neither. But, but also I, I also understand where you're coming from. Yeah, like I, I, I would really love to see this game 
thrive even more off of or just yeah. just to see what happens if it was in the hands of another developer team for like you know two months that would be great i mean we're never going to get it so there's no point talking about it but yeah <laughs> it would be cool yeah absolutely uh so there was another uh snafu this week uh he do you know what i'm talking about um, you talking about the campaign thing? The Minerva campaign. So the Minerva yeah. campaign showed back up, and there were some people that were able to jump in and do part of the campaign and get Minerva shards. I unfortunately I was not one of those, and I'm actually kind of happy I was not one of those at this point because Fox Next has come out and said, "Hey, we're going to give everybody who didn't get to do the campaign 15 free Minerva shards." Mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. Uh, yeah, there were some people yeah. in my alliance that got. The Minerva, but they only got mm. like two shards. Yeah. And so I kind of feel bad for them, but I also, from what I understand, they did get like all the purple gear and stuff for doing it. So I'm kind of I mean, like, who cares about the purple gear though? Whenever Minerva shards are on the line. Well, now that's fair, and I think the 15 Minerva shards are going to be great. But let me ask you a question: How many shards does your Minerva have right now? Uh, I don't know. Don't make me open up a okay. client right now. So I can tell you <laughs> that my Minerva is nowhere near ready. Those 15 shards, they're nice, mm-hmm. but they're not going to push me over a star level. No, I won't for now, either. But that, it gets that me 10 or 20 closer. gear, that's going to mm-hmm. get me another piece on, on Ultron. So, you know, is it? do you play the long game or do you go for the, go for the immediate needs? I so, would still take I would still take the Minerva shards because it's just a step closer with an unfarmable character. That's the most, you know, one of the most overpowered characters in the game. Yeah, I and I have yeah. a feeling that she's going to be the next Black Widow. So she probably is. I'm waiting for her yeah. to drop into premiums, and I know that there are some people, Evan, who have like 800 to 900 plus orbs to open. Evan, uh, so. Really? Yeah, he shared a screenshot of. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. He shared a screenshot of his uh, store because uh, I guess he got like three unique drops at one time in the store. Mm-hmm. But my immediate takeaway was if you look at orbs, it says eight, it said like eight hundred sixty-two. Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> so so I'm like, holy crap, man! He goes, that really wasn't the takeaway here. <laughs> I'm like, no, but that's like, that's now the takeaway. <laughs> yeah, um, he's the guy with a bunker. Yeah, he is the guy ready with the bunker. to go at Armageddon. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think though about their their solution for the Minerva campaign? Do you think that the like, the 15 free shards to the and what about the people that may have only gotten two or three shards, two or four, you know, shards? Should they get the makeup to 15? <sighs> I mean, I think so. I mean, there's, it's not like they did anything wrong. It showed up on their thing, and they were like, oh, what's this? Okay, I'll do it. And then, you know, that's it. They didn't know they were doing anything wrong. And even if it, they did, I don't even hold it against them. I mean, it's it's ultimately, it's Fox Next mistake, not theirs. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like it would be nice if they got bumped up to there because we do know that... I mean, so it's because they completed some nodes, right? So whenever that comes back around, I imagine those nodes will be closed because they already did them technically. And then for us, we're going to have those 15 shards and ours are still open. You know what I mean? Right. And I do have to make a quick correction. Minerva was added uh, to premiums. Um, she's available to like a three point one one percent drop rate, but yeah, I think it's I, I think that. it's a limited time. I can't I remember exactly. I don't think they ever specified, so people were thinking that it was it was a limited time, maybe. But yeah. I don't think because that happened what about two weeks ago, right? Yeah, something like that. So I do need to correct myself. Yeah. Sorry, I've not seen any Minerva shards drop, even though she's got a higher drop rate. But you know, uh. So I apologize. Um, but yeah, so I, I lost my train of thought now. Uh, I don't know where you were at either. Awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, oh, hey, oh, you'll figure okay. it out when you go back and edit no, the no. show. 
I got it though. I got it though. Uh, we were, I was saying that. So basically, we are going to be having whenever the Minerva campaign does come around, or if it does come back around, we're going to have a slight advantage at that point because we're still going to have the option to clear those nodes that they already took out. Plus, we're going to have the fifteen shards. I don't think I mean, the campaign's coming back. What they said, if I remember correctly, what they said on Reddit... They said it doesn't necessarily mean it's coming back. Right. Wait, so I mean, take it for what that's worth. Right, right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we don't know if it is or if it isn't. If it is, then we're going to have a bit of an advantage. If it isn't, then we're still going to have probably a bit more of an advantage. So, I don't know. It's, it's not my job to decide that. But, um, yeah, I I would certainly rather be in my position than theirs i'll say that right uh so what cerebro had said uh on reddit was uh hi all there was an event screen that was visible for only a few minutes earlier today that featured minerva this was a template screen that wasn't meant to go live and is not an indication that the minerva event is returning now however a few players were able to complete a couple of nodes in those uh short minutes therefore we'll be sending all players that didn't get the chance to complete the nodes 15 character shards of minerva it will take some time to set up so we appreciate your patience in the meantime so you're absolutely right where it says there's not an indication that the minerva events returning now and they have returned events in the past for special mm -hmm. for special events i just yeah i wouldn't expect it any any uh anytime soon yeah same but it's just you know down the road whenever it when or if it it does come back but yeah uh yeah. So moving on, uh, the beta raid returned, mm -hmm. and so, uh, yay! I mean, yeah. it, it, pff, that's it, my thought on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm kind of with you there. I know what they're doing. They started the whole nonsense with the uh, the gamma raid. Really expected it to happen with the alpha raid and didn't. Uh, it probably will next time around. Um, mm -hmm. I mean the. The orbs are. I mean, let's 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 take a look here. Uh, Bullseye Carnage, I mean, Electra, all the hand mm -hmm. minions, all the hand minions, all yeah. the mercenary minions. Uh, it does have Rhino Shocker and Green Goblin in it, so that's that's kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. And Venom, so Rhino Shocker and Venom, but really. Hand minions. No, no, I'm not going to lie. Hand assassin is going to be nice to get out of there if you get her. But the rest of those are just kind of like they said. They said select city villains. Yeah. Right. Hold on. We now have this handy nifty new feature where you can you can filter. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious if I go villain city. By the way, for those of you that may not be aware, you can multi filter. Uh, you can keep filtering down by selecting. Uh, so if you select city, you can select villain, you can select mystic, whatever, and filter uh, and, and pull out multiple filters. So uh, let's see. Uh, they said select city, and every single one is in there except Mysterio. Yeah. And Vulture. I'm sorry. Vulture's not in there. So Mysterio and Vulture. Other than that, they have everybody else in there. So there's your selection. Everybody but Vulture and Mysteria. Yeah, not not a great orb. So, <laughs> I just uh. their wording their wording kills me. So, <laughs> ugh. Um. So. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> Select city villains. Hit the two filters. Well done, Murdoch. So, yeah. The 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 beta raids back. Yay. Uh. Moving into uh, some of the uh, the blog post here, uh, for those of you that may not be aware, and if you haven't listened to the entire show, uh, this month Marvel is celebrating its 80th anniversary. We've enjoyed 80 years of incredible stories of superhumans duking it out with the forces of evil and saving the planet from certain doom. We've fallen in love with characters who turn invisible, shoot lasers from their eyes, shapeshift, bend reality, wield adamantium mental claws, and melt foes with the heat of a thousand suns. It's been a wild ride, and Marvel fans have a lot to be excited about. And the excitement continues here. We have a slew of anniversary events to help Marvel blow out all 80 birthday candles, along with some other fun events coming up, so let's take a look. So as part of this, they are doing, uh, they are giving a select list of characters the Marvel 80th trait. 
Now I'm going to read off. Uh, yeah, I'll read off that list real quick. So Namor, Mr. Fantastic, Human Torch, The Thing, Black Widow, Captain America, Hawkeye, Hulk, Iron Man, Thor, Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, Groot, Rocket Raccoon, Captain Marvel, Wolverine, Deadpool, Storm, Miss Marvel, Black Panther, Spider-Man, and Thanos. So there's a lot of characters that'll be getting that 80th uh, trait, which you'll need to use for certain things. Uh, for example, I think you're only going to be able to use the 80th trait to unlock the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's going to be more. There's going to be an 80th blitz and orb milestones. Um, oof. Let's see. Next are the Marvel 80th Blitz and or Milestones. In the Bobastic Blitz Milestone, use your Marvel 80th characters to fight your way through Blitz battles to score points and earn Marvel Anniversary Orb fragments, Namor shards, and other rewards. The Marvel Anniversary Orb contains select marquee characters and features Namor at a higher drop rate. In the Orbs Away Milestone, you can score points by opening Marvel Anniversary Orbs to earn Namor shards, Orange Elite Orb fragments, and other rewards. So the list of 80th uh, trait characters isn't bad. There's one on here I'm just kind of like, really? And that's Miss Marvel. She's a relatively new character to the, to, the, to the thing. I would expect, like, most of these other ones are much older characters. Yeah, Miss Marvel was the one that surprised me as well. Um, I mean, Groot and Rocket... I can't remember how long they've been in the, uh, what their first appearance was. Um, but it, yeah, it, needless to say that Miss Marvel's inclusion on there really kind of struck me as odd. Um, but the rest of the list seemed fine. Yeah. I didn't really, I didn't really have a huge problem with those. Uh, yeah. So Groot and Rocket are also relatively new. So Groot's first appearance was in September 2007. Hmm. Um, I imagine Rocket's going to be right around the same. Give me one second here. Actually, I take that back. Rocket's been around a long time. Rocket, Rocket came out May 1982. Oh, yeah. That's been uh, a bit. I wonder if I wonder if the Groot I was looking at was the wrong one. I wanna I wanna take another quick look at Groot here. Groot Earth six one six. Nope. Yeah, it definitely looks like he was relatively newish. So yeah. Alright. Hmm. Anyway, uh I thought he'd been around a little bit longer than that, but nope. Nope. It doesn't yeah. seem to be that way. At least not according to the Marvel Wiki, which is where I get most of my data, so uh, right, right, right. What do you think about the? It's, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, uh, I I want to see what they do with it. You know, like all the things that they use these use this trait for, all the vents and everything like that that they're going to do. So I'm reserving my judgment for that. Yeah. Uh, real quick. Apparently, I'm. Uh, there's some correction here. Groot appeared in 1960 uh, in Tales to Astonish, so I'm not sure why the Marvel Wiki has that wrong or has it different. Or because the world needs a, you to correct it. I wonder if it's a different. I wonder if it's a different uh, Groot. I don't know. Um, That's something to be hung up on, though. Oh, you know me. Mm-hmm. You know me. That's what, I mean. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> it's 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 how I'm gonna be. Mm-hmm. It's how I'm gonna be. So okay, I gotta I gotta move on. People in people in chat, quit 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 quit. quit. Okay. So oh, I went right back to Groot. So uh, then we got in that in the same blog post we got the. Passive duration update bug fix. So for those of you that uh, may not have noticed, there's an issue where sometimes a character will apply a buff or a debuff at the end of another character's turn. 
And then that buff and or debuff just immediately goes away. And a really good example of this is Groot. And so Groot's passive gives him the chance to apply two slows to uh, an enemy for uh, if they attack him. But Mm -hmm. it applies immediately so that once that enemy's turn is technically over, one of those slows goes away. Right. So you don't really get the two slows, or you don't get the benefit of the two slows. And so here's what uh, Foxnext said today in their latest uh, dev blog. Our 3.4 release is around the corner, and included in the release is a bug fix that will have a visual change to certain passive abilities. The bug affected passive abilities that applied positive effects to self and resulted in a duration that was too long for some characters and too short for others. The fix ensures that the correct durations for these passive abilities will be applied. An example of a character ability affected by this fix is Groot. Groot is a good example as his passive applies slow when he's hit. Groot was previously applying too slow, but one would immediately disappear because the person who hit him would have their turn expire. Now, he'll just apply a single slow, but it won't immediately disappear. Other examples where you may see... Other examples where you may see changes like this are in passive abilities like when Nebula gains speed up or when Storm applies speed up to X-Men allies. How these abilities work in combat won't be changing, but we want, you to give a head, want to give you a heads up as there will be situations where it might look slightly different. And I, I, take, I take umbrage with this statement. What's that sound? That... That is Bigsby. Sorry, Bigsby heard okay. me say something and thought I said I thought I was talking to it. Um, I actually take some umbrage with this one, right? And the mm-hmm. reason why is specifically because they mention Groot, and so Groot gets a it, without the without a maxed out passive has a fifty percent chance to apply two slows. If you drop a passive on him, he now will he is supposed to apply two slows all the time, mm-hmm. barring resistance. Okay. Well, the way this now reads is he will no longer apply two slows. He's just going to apply one. It just won't go right. away. And I'm like, but that that's not what we paid for. We paid for yeah, two slows. A little unfair. Right? Uh, so hopefully we're going to see some orange mats. Uh, I've sent out a request to Cerebro for further explanation uh, because this, 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 this reeks of the Yondu passive. Um and the rocket passive, which I still haven't fixed, and it's just, ugh. I don't. Yeah, I think it. I don't like yeah. it when they do this. I don't. I just don't like it when they do this. And this this goes back to my earlier statement of I I really question what they understand about how the game operates. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. But yeah, it, it does feel um uh, a little cheap of them to do that. You know, and especially when they say how they how they work in combat won't be changing. But so all you're doing, all you're doing is saying, meh, eh, you're just not going to see it now. Right. <laughs> you're not going to get what you expect. Uh, sorry. Hey, this is this is really I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be I'm going to be pretty blunt. This is not a fix. This is a band aid. And all they're doing is they're saying, you're just not going to see it anymore. It's still going to be there. So Groot says he's going to apply two. You're going to see one. Sorry. I expect we're going to see some some descriptions being rewritten. Yeah, probably. So I, I'm, I'm really just kind of... Oof. I agree. Yeah. So... Uh, Apostolic, uh, 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 apostolic pants uh, in chat says current two slows one leaves immediately at the end of the turn where uh, where you attack Groot net one slow change one slow that doesn't disappear at the end of the turn net one slow no change in effect yes we are not getting the two slows that we you know are expecting right, 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 right so exactly. that's especially with him that's my that's my main issue so um. Yeah, I guys, let feel free to let us let me know what you think. Um, but uh, we're gonna 
uh, we're going to kind of move on from there because I can I can probably rant on this all night. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. So uh, Hebrew, you've got some exciting news coming up. Uh, it's going to be a little sad right. for our listeners, but uh, you have some exciting news. You are going on vacay. That's right, going on a cruise, and uh, really looking forward to it. So yeah, I'm going to be gone for uh, basically two weeks of the show. So. Now, uh, I do want to, and I apologize, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I do want to mm-hmm. let all our listeners know, don't don't fear. I am working on plans uh, to bring in some special guest hosts, and I'm hoping to bring in some new voices for you guys uh, and not kind of go back to the same well that we've gone to in the past um, <laughs> and, and try to change things up, uh, maybe get in some... Uh, different content creators, uh, or who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to yeah. happen? It it could be it could be really exciting stuff. So uh, I will keep everybody uh, informed of what's happening as we get closer to those dates. But Hebrew, uh, getting back to your vacation, wh- where are you going? What you doing, man? Um, so I am going to be going to uh, like the, the Bahamas and a couple of you know islands around there, like oh, Saint nice. Kitt and stuff like that. Yeah. Don't go to um, Puerto Rico. Huh? Don't go to Puerto Rico. Or I'm sorry, Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah, I, I won't. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. My whole family's going going big, big, big group. So I think we're like 25 all together or so. Nice. And, uh, Is your girlfriend yeah, going so with you? Yeah, yeah. Nice. And uh, and my my sister and her boyfriend are coming, and stuff like that. So uh, they they both live in Hawaii, so it'll be good to see them. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be good old time. Sorry, I'm not sounding super enthusiastic about it just because <laughs> I'm I'm like I I messaged Dorian just a few minutes ago like uh, these <laughs> these medications. They're kind of kicking my ass right now. <laughs> yeah. Pain med's going to do it. Pain med's going to yeah, do And they're yeah. going to knock your butt out. So in that, uh, out of respect mm-hmm. for Hebrew and uh, his uh, inability to remain coherent for much longer, we are going to – we are going <laughs> to – it and out. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to uh, skip our, prote- uh, our protector list for the night, and we'll pick that back up uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, but what we are going to do, Hebrew, before we, before we head out of here, uh, are, we are going to, we are going to take a couple of grab bag if you're okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Uh, but we're going to, this week we're going to pick some kind of fun ones. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Let's see. Would you rather fight, uh, mosquito carrying malaria or nebula in real life? (laughs) Uh, I'd rather fight Nebula because I would I would like to go out in a super badass way, <clears throat> and uh, I feel like I could do that with her. Plus, you know, I bet I could make her like she's just so angry all the time. I bet I could make her just like uh, I don't know, like troll her, then make her do something stupid, and then I'd be able to escape her maybe. So yeah, <laughs> I'd rather just not get malaria basically. So. Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty fair. Uh, as long as she doesn't kill me, I'll heal from that. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Is Hebrews Hammer a claw hammer, or does he moonlight as an MC? Regards, his par- parole officer, a.k.a. the Rampant Stoner. I, what? Slow it down and say it again. I'm not repeating that one. That one makes no sense. <laughs> uh, I, I am whichever one you think is is the coolest yeah there we go that's that's fair Uh, i'm sorry i didn't get all of it but yeah (laughs) i'm with you (laughs) yeah with you being with you being where you're at it's gonna be fun uh let's see uh uh, uh, sorry 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 no you're good uh is Dorian excited for the rumored Amory work? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm excited for, for it, too. You are, like, too. Got, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hebrew. I got skin in the game now. Yeah. What is your quest? Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, to find the uh, the Holy Grail. What is your favorite color? Black. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? An unladen swallow. <laughs> uh, African or European? I don't know. Ah! <laughs> I love Monty Python, so you're not going <laughs> to yes. chip me up. <laughs> uh Oh, we didn't talk about this very much, and I'm I apologize for that. There was there was uh, the whole Fantastic Four leaked video that looked like it showed the ISO eight, which could yeah. indicate you know there's the been mods. a rumor of mods coming in the future. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we had a couple of questions about mods. Um, can you please uh, offer? Where... I don't care as a choice, or I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe depends on how I'm feeling that day. <laughs> if I feel it's appropriate, I will. I, I think, it, you know, this is not coming from anywhere. This is just straight up a guess. But um, they they have mentioned mods. So I, I just think that ISO makes the best sense for them to put that in thematically. And considering we just saw that video, which if it's a fake, it's a really, really good fake. Um, I, yeah, I can't comment on the video. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know you can, and that's why I, I'm not. I'm not making you. So, um, all I'm saying is that yeah, I think that I think that that is exactly what it is. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, next question: Are there actually any any benefits to being an envoy for Fox Next, and what can Fox Next do to work with their envoys more? So, uh, there are some benefits, right? So, uh, well. We had had a kind of a content creator group going um, with with quite a few of us before we became envoys. And I think nearly mm-hmm. everybody in that group is now an envoy. Um, but, I'm holding out. Huh? I said I'm holding out. And that's fine. You 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 do you, brother. Uh, <laughs> are there I benefits? Just, I, I mean, it's just me and Roy that aren't in, in it right now, right? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, Pa, who's still in that, who's still in that group? I don't know. Him. Uh, yeah, uh, Pa Pokemon did some video. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, all right, never mind, I know, yeah. Um, yeah. Are there benefits? I mean, we get, we get a direct ear to Fox Next, whether or not it makes a difference. I mean, I'd like to think it kind of does, because I can tell you that there have been some things that... Uh, they came out and said, hey, this is what we're doing. And we all just kind of said, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and then a few hours later, things were changed. So, you know, Cerebro does a great job of fighting for the community. I really think he does. Um, I think that there are some things he can't change. I mean, he's just a community manager. He's kind of that go-between between, uh, that go-between between, well done. That go between for the community and and Fox Next, he's not a decision maker. He can just take feedback to them, right? And yeah. I mean, his job obviously entails a whole lot more than that. But you know, that's that's kind of his primary role. And then to have to, you know, boy, I hate saying this way, but spin, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the the Fox Next atrocities to the community is. Uh, I don't envy him his job. I really, really don't. Um, what can they do to work with their envoys more? Um, they're, I mean, pay for me to come out to LA and visit the studio. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, that would be. I mean, if they that did that, sweet. I, if they did that, then I would message through and be like, "All right." Yeah, okay. and then all of us are gonna go. No, you, you're not coming because you held out. And you don't you don't get to you don't get to you don't get to reap the benefits when we've been through it, right? I, we went I, through the war. We're reaping the benefits first. I mean, I'm just if I I have a 100 percent open invitation to bend the knee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will I will say there's one thing that I've heard people say um, that really gets under my skin uh, because you know me, you know that that I try very hard to be extremely ethical and moral um Mm -hmm. people saying things like well you get advanced information so you know who to farm yeah we're there are some things they play very close to the chest there are Mm -hmm. some people out there who do get inside leak information and i i'm not going to name names um 
that actually affects things. But. That 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 does affect things, and th- you know, I do know that there are people who are getting some of that inside baseball that the rest of us aren't, and and, and not through any official channels. Let me just say that. So it, that irks me, but as a whole, we are not getting information that would allow us to take advantage of a situation. For example, we when we announced the uh, Dark Phoenix Legendary, we had, what, two days? Yeah. To, to tell you who it was going to be. We didn't know it was going to be missing controllers before then. We knew the Legendary was coming. We didn't know who it was going to require. And if you mm-hmm. remember, to a man, we all said, it's a five-star unlock. So, and then a week later, they said, no, it's not. <laughs> so, right. you know, we don't have an advantage in that regards. Um, so, you know, at least, you know, the yeah, so we don't have that. Um, Hebrew, how see, do you, let's see, what is the optimal bagel and bagel prep? Oh, man. Um so for me, you know, that's like a rite of passage, bagel eating. So uh, <laughs> personally, I go ahead and I – first of all, you got to get your bagels from the right place. You either got to make your own, which I'm I'm not good at at all. Um, so, But you have to find your designated Jewish bagel place, right? <laughs> so you go there. You make that your spot. You get to know everyone. And uh, you got to make sure – First of all, once you get yours, you got to pick out the kind that you like. Usually, uh, most everyone, it seems like, goes for onion. Um, but I get my onion bagel, personally, and uh, I go for belly locks instead of Nova locks. And I give it a nice little toast. Uh, not too much, but I, I toast it both sides. And then I uh, spread some butter on it. And not too much. And then I put some uh, a schmear of cream cheese on it, put my belly locks on there, and uh, yeah, then you're kind of good to go. So if I could find a good Jewish bagel shop, mm-hmm. I would do that mm-hmm. in a heartbeat. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. I love locks. It's amazing stuff. Like I, I personally like. I think that that's really like a big thing. It's just like there's a lot of people that don't know that there's two types of locks. There's there's Nova and Belly, and uh, I personally like. I, Nova's Nova's decent, but for me, I love the belly locks. It's it's the slightly saltier one. It's the more orange okay. of the two, and it's oof. nice. Oof. Now, so good. I will tell you that for me, since I don't have that here, or I don't know of a place to go, uh, mm-hmm. typically we get uh, Panera, right? Yeah, it's okay. So it and it's and you're right. It's okay. Uh, as a yeah. generic bagel goes, I, it's great. Now, I will tell you, their honey walnut cream cheese is amazing. Yeah, um, I'll give you that. Their blueberry cream cheese is really good, too. So, for me, I like the... Uh, they have a chocolate chip bagel that I'll toast. And... It's like it's a bastardization of a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> they also have a cinnamon raisin, which is really good, too. Uh, but, I'll I, I, like you, I toast it on both sides. And then... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I smear tons of cream cheese on mine. I'm the, I'm the guy you don't want to be behind it at, at the, at, if there's a limited amount of cream cheese, cause mm. it'll be gone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't, I feel like it's, it's all a delicate balance. I feel like for me, at least it's, it's all a very delicate balance. I can't have, can't have too much. Can't have too little. So Yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful about it. But it's it's really funny whenever you get a whole big group of, of like a Jewish family together. Whenever they go to, you know, their their bagel place in the morning, you know, usually like their deli place. Uh, yeah, they also always have their bagels, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's quite an ordeal. It's amazing. See, so I grew up German, right, uh, mm-hmm. in Cincinnati, and mm-hmm. so we did we did uh, like sausage in in, in uh, Geta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, or we would go to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that was that was kind of our thing. But the man, this Cincinnati get is amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, sorry, didn't mean to take away from the from the bagel conversation. Not no, like, I get not, it. Not, not like Getta. Uh, so, 
Uh, da, 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 Hebrew. Uh, mm-hmm. I think we're gonna call that. We're gonna call that a night. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to hold you on too much. And I think. I think finishing off with you giving giving all of us uh, proper instructions on how to do a bagel was was a yeah. good ending. So uh, you are not gonna be able to talk to the audience for a couple of weeks. So is there anything you want to kind of finish out with? Um, just. Yeah, I mean, well, we'll see what ho- goes on. I hope that every, I hope that there isn't too many bugs uh, in the meantime. I'll still be around on the Discord. I should be getting Wi-Fi on on the boat. So, yeah, it should be good. But um, yeah, uh, thanks for for listening, everyone. Thanks for you know the patrons, the um, to help support the show and. Everyone showing up live. I'm interested to see what happens. I mean, I'm going to end up listening to the episodes that I'm not there for. So uh, <laughs> it be interesting to see what happens. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. All right. Well, hey, before we head out, uh, we got to give the paying audience what they came for. And you got to let everybody know who you're farming. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I'm, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm technically farming for Ultron. I'm just getting I'm just getting everything ready for Ultron to get him up um, as quick as possible so I can start my second run. So, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. Other than that, I'm I'm just hoarding everything right now because I don't know what is coming. I need more information before I do anything definitive. Which so. is fair. Yeah. What about you? Uh, so I am farming gear, gear, and more gear. I am buying. Uh, torches and spiky balls. Whenever I see them, I am the mistake I'm making. I'm not. I'm not spending a ton of energy on gear, and I need to kind of stop. I need to start doing that. But I am still also farming because I want Phoenix, her second mm-hmm. go around, and I still need uh, 109 shards of Hand Assassin. Mm-hmm. So Hand Assassin is a daily farm. Uh, right. and then I'm also doing Nobu and Loki, uh, because if, if I get, let's say I get lucky on, on some of these city villain stuff and, and get some hand assassin shards or get some drops of her and, and just get really, really lucky. And then if I get lucky with Nobu and, and Loki as well, I can get Phoenix at seven. So I need a lot of luck for that. Right, right, right. That's the, that's the bad part about it. And I'm not spending war credits for Nobu. So it's that's a little bit slower mm-hmm. than, than what I would like. Uh but yeah, other than that, uh man, gear for Ultron. Yeah, that yeah, that's that's the big boy. Yeah, so I, I too want to get into the uh Fear of the Darkness a second time. Now I could do it with my team that I ran through uh, actually I have Star Lord now, which was huge. Yeah, but it's just um, more fun to do it with Ultron. It is. Right? It is. I've heard it's much, much, much more fun to do with Ultron. So, and I'm not hurting for the the gear. So yeah, you know, and I don't. I don't know. I don't remember if you get the gold for the second run or not. If you get the gold orbs and the mega orbs for the second run, uh, when they do the level increase, if I don't have him at T13, I might just. I might just bite the bullet and do it anyway. Yeah. So, we'll have to see, but. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been working on. Very so, nice. uh, Hebrew. Uh, before mm-hmm. we do the outro, I just want to say, uh, be safe, mm-hmm. enjoy your cruise, and cannot wait for you to come back and regale us with stories. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. So, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening to the Ravager Report. You can find us on any and all of your favorite podcast apps or by going directly to our Podbean site at ravagerreport.podbean.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us, leave us a rating and a review as it does help us make the show better for you. You can find us on Twitter at Ravager Repo and join our Discord channel at discord.me forward slash Ravager Report. If you would like to help support our show, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Ravager Report. And for just $5 per month, you can get early access to the uncut live show a day or two before it's released. Finally, we do want to send a great big shout out to all of our patrons and listeners for their continued support. And until next time, keep fighting, true believers. <laughs>